Imagine you're shooting a cannon um, from the surface of the earth and you shoot the cannonball and it flies in a kind of projectile motion like that. Now imagine you do the same thing um, but you shoot the cannon further. So you, you shoot it and it goes further like that. All right. Now zoom out even further and if you've got a big enough cannon and you've got a powerful enough force, then you shoot your cannon and the cannon the, the, the cannonball is still falling down. Up here we've got the force of weight acting, right? And it's acting down towards the centre of the earth. So then if you have the same thing and your cannonball is flying around the earth here, then weight is still acting, but the cannonball is falling at the same rate as the earth is falling away from it because of the curvature of the earth. So the cannonball, first of all, first of all will go down like that, but if you fight it even harder, it will keep going and keep going and keep going. And it's still falling. It's falling. Gravity is always directed towards the center of the earth. It's still falling, but it's falling at the same rate as the earth is curving away. And you'll notice that these arrows are all pointing towards the center of the earth and the cannonball will just keep assuming that there's no air resistance the cannonball would just keep going round and around it's going to keep falling and it's never going to hit the earth because it's falling at the same rate as the earth is curving away from it so we call we have a special word for that we call that an orbit so that cannonball is now effectively in orbit now it wouldn't really work with a cannonball um because you don't you can't get a powerful enough cannon first of all but also um air resistance would slow it down and it would eventually hit the ground um however this same principle applies for anything moving in a circle so if we have um a uh, a bucket for example on the end of a string we swing the bucket around our heads and it moves in a circle like that we have the same principle in action this force the f in this case the thing that's uh the thing that's changing the direction of the bucket instead of gravity as it was over here the thing that's changing the direction of the bucket is the tension in the string and in this case the tension in the string is still pointing towards the center of the circle and the bucket is moving around and at every single point there is the tension in the string pulling it towards the center of the circle so the bucket keeps moving in a circle because of the tension in the string. Now, the force that makes something move in a circle is called the centripetal force. Centripetal force. And the centripetal force is, uh, is not really a force on its own, as we've seen in these two examples, it's not really a force on its own. It's got to be provided by something else. Now, the centripetal force is equal to the mass of the object moving in a circle times its speed squared divided by the radius of its, uh, of its orbit, the radius of its circle. So let's look at the, the bucket example. Um, we have a... Uh, a diagram here showing uh, the bucket at four different stages of its circle. The bucket is traveling around like that. And uh, if we uh, if we look at the forces at each stage, let's start off over here. So the forces acting on this bucket are the weight and the tension from the rope there, T. Um, and so the only force that's acting towards the center of the circle. Uh, and so the only force that can keep that bucket moving in a circle is the tension. So the tension in this case equals the centripetal force. So tension equals mv squared over r. Okay, so that's the that's in in this situation over here. If we uh, if we look at this situation on the right, uh, sorry on the left, then uh, then we've got tension and the weight of the bucket, the weight of the bucket is still the same. Um, and so in this case, the centripetal force, again, must be provided by the tension because it's the only force acting in the correct direction. 
So the tension is the centripetal force, which is mv squared over r. And now we come to look at the, uh, the, the other two. So uh, let's start off down here. Down here, we've got the weight of the bucket. Um, but and the centripetal force needs to um, needs to be keeping the uh, the bucket moving in a circle, so it needs to be pointing towards the centre of the circle. So from uh, not only does the tension, if you look at the tension in this rope, not only does the tension need to balance the weight, which is about that much, but it also needs to provide the same centripetal force as was being provided over here and over here. Um, in order to keep that bucket moving in a circle. So uh, to, to do that, the tension must be much greater. So here, um, the tension is that much. So here, the tension equals the um, weight plus the centripetal force. Because here, um, the tension has to first balance the weight and then provide the centripetal force. So the tension is at its highest at the bottom. Up here at the top, which is a different color, up here at the top, um, we've got the weight of the bucket. Now this time the weight of the bucket is pointing towards the center of the circle. So the weight of the bucket can provide some of the centripetal force. The rest of the centripetal force is gonna be provided by the tension. Um, and so the tension is going to be much smaller in this case. So in this case, the, um, the centripetal force equals the weight plus the tension. Um, and so if we rearrange that to be in terms of the tension, then tension is the um, centripetal force minus the weight. So down here, the, ten the tension is the centripetal force plus the weight. Up here, the tension is the centripetal force minus the weight. Now, in certain circumstances, you uh, can go even further and you can say, well, at some point, the, the speed of the centripetal force that you need for this situation up here is small enough that it can all be provided by the weight. So in that situation, then um, the, the uh, centripetal force equals the weight. So if the centripetal force here equals the weight here, then the tension in the rope is zero and the, um, the bucket is effectively weightless at the top. Um, so the circumstances in which that needs to happen are uh, if we've got, if I redraw the bucket up here, and then we've got uh, the weight providing the centripetal force. So the weight equals mv squared over r then um, we can say that the weight divided by the mass times the radius equals v squared. So square root that and you get v. And that gives you a value for the minimum speed that um, the bucket must be traveling in order to keep moving in a circle. Any slower than that, and the weight will be greater than the centripetal force, so the bucket will fall down. Any faster than that, uh, and it will keep moving in a circle, but some of the centripetal force needs to be provided by the tension.